everybody. How are you? Good. How are you? Good way to listen or email us. I don't want to forget this. So okay. I want to bring it up to you now. Okay. He wanted to know if it was a red flag that his girlfriend, for his birthday, she got him uh, one of the shirts. Columbia. Columbia. A Columbia shirt, mm-hmm. pants like you wear. She wants him to grow a beard out. And she also has a big fascination with you. And he's like, is this a red flag that she wants me to look like Luke Combs? Not so much about you specifically, but about her wanting him right. to look like somebody else. I feel like it may be more of a fetish. I well, that's what like I said. I used the word fetish flag, too, yeah, because I have that toward you as well, and so I yeah. related, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. What, no, it, I mean, I mean, I guess it depends. What it's, advice would you give him? I mean, just have poor genetics on the beard no. <laughs> thing if you really want to grow like a really patchy beard. Is yours patchy? Oh, it dude. looks a plus. No, it's, no, it's I appreciate it, but it, this is it. This isn't trend. This is it. It's just all that grows. It, like it's maxed out. But it look, I think it looks good. It's I never thought it. Like good. There's old patchy beard combs. It's, yeah. <laughs> I never said that about you walking in. It's very necky, you know. I wish it was more high. You know? Like I don't have that Billy Mays like I get it high. This thing, you know. But I have to shave without my glasses on because I'm blind and I always forget to shave up near my eyes. It goes that high. It actually yeah, it actually covers my eyebrow. Huh. I have hairy eyes. Wow. Yeah, it's just weird. Uh <laughs> you have a new out it you don't even have to do promotion at this point, so I appreciate you coming by. <laughs> I mean, I told him at the grand business like this is the most anticipated thing in forever. You literally could do no promotion at all, and it would be massive. And then I was looking, I said, well, the album's coming out today. It's actually out today. It's called Getting Old. It's the second part of the first record, but it's its own record. Yeah, for sure. Dif- different things, no doubt. And then I was like, oh, let me just promote some Luke Combs shows. And I look at the list. I don't know how many there are, but there's a ton. And Sold Out is next to every single one of them except in Zurich, Switzerland, where there's like five seats left. Yeah. Crazy. Wow. So wow. you five people in Zurich, get your t- this is the promotion now. <laughs> get your tickets now. He needs to make like $90 more dollars, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> After fees. and it, So if you're in Zurich, otherwise everything is sold out. One of the issues that I have had, and I think as someone who is so in tune with his fans, you'll understand and you probably have done many things, is that people buy up the tickets from my shows and try to resell them for like four times as much. And, I get, mm-hmm. and I'm like, don't buy them. I told Mala, don't buy the red tickets. If they're, yeah. Do you have that issue where people are buying them, reselling them, and you're just like, I'm just trying to get oh, people definitely. into shows? Yeah, definitely. I mean, everybody does, you know. Um We've been doing Ticketmaster Verified for years now. Um, does that help a whole lot? It does. Yeah, it does help a whole lot. I mean, obviously, it's not, you know, it's it's impossible to stop right. that from happening, you know, like entirely, but it helps a lot. Here's sure. what I suggest. Set up a ticket booth and you're in it, like a kissing booth Ooh. before the show. Mm-hmm. They come buy them from you. Right. Face like up. A, yeah. Then, then you beep, walk them in. Yeah. Through the metal detector. <laughs> Yeah. Everybody gets in. I mean, I definitely think that that's something, it's something that needs to be addressed somehow in some way, shape, or form. Like, I, I'm not smart enough to know. Let me how ask to you this. That, but it does need to happen. Because you're, you're killing it, obviously. You've been killing it since the moment you came out of the womb. Are you starting to save footage for in like 15 or 20 years so you can do like a Garth whole package of your career? Because almost now, it's your success has been, I mean, I, I haven't seen anything like it. And, I hope you've been saving stuff because it's going to take this at some point for you to have it. Yeah, we have a lot of stuff. You know, I think we're we're kind of trying to do that right now. Um, yeah, it's it's just odd though. Like the thought of that to me is really strange. But you could recreate some of it though. Shave his beard. Oh You're yeah. Like I'm yeah. 19. I'm going to audition <laughs> right. for a guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we don't have anything that far back. I think which is kind of. But at the time, it's like you're not thinking, man. I should be taking pictures of this or, and it wasn't as even though it was it wasn't as social media where you're recording yes. everything where mm-hmm. if somebody who's 19 now they're just doing it because it's the lifestyle right it's they just do it uh, they're just doing that anyways you know i saw you at the grammys in la is that more of a nerve-wracking thing for you because you're dressed up formal or is it is it just a really cool show no i i, I mean it's, i think it's different just because it's like it's the all genre thing is just so different i mean it's so different than you know, going to the CMAs or, or you're going to the ACMs or something. It's just like at those shows, you know, you kind of feel like you at least halfway know everybody that's there. And then you just kind of, you know, you go to the Grammys and you're just like one of a million people, you know, and it's like, it's just weird. And everybody, it's just, I mean, you know, you're dressed up formal, but it's like you might as well be wearing a T-shirt compared to what everybody yeah. else is wearing. You know what I mean? Did you see anybody while you're performing – I don't know how the lights situation was. Could you see anybody famous while you were playing, or were you so just dialed in? I didn't look. I mean, I just like I just didn't want to. I just try not to look. You know, I'm also a horrible guitar player, so I was really focused on not messing that up as well. <laughs> yeah, that was more of my concern at that time. 
Luke Combs is here. The new record is out today. It is called Getting Old, which, so talk about the project in general. When you did the first half of this, did you know it was, that growing up was going to be the first half? Yeah, I did. Okay, yeah, because so I had the, I had a song, I have had it for a while, called um, Growing Up and Getting Old. Um, and I feel like really the way it worked out was just, I mean, we recorded over the last, I don't know, three years, which is just kind of, I think of that time frame of when we recorded growing up and when we recorded getting old, it's like they weren't separate. Like all the songs were kind of recorded mm -hmm. in this two and a half, three year period. And then there was songs picked for growing up, which is feels entirely different to me than the next one. And so when we were putting the track list together for that one, it was like, well, I got this whole other thing. And I have a lot more songs that sound like getting old than growing up, right? And so I wanted those to live separately. You know, I didn't want to put out a big, you know, I feel like that's the thing now everybody's putting out like a big, huge thing. Um, and not that there's anything wrong with that. It's just not what I want to do because I feel like it's, I want each song to kind of get a moment to, for people to have a chance to hear it, I guess. Yeah, as a know? consumer, if somebody puts out 30 songs, I, n I never even hit play on 20 of them. It's hard. I mean, my it's attention just, span's not there. I'm, a, I'm right. four years old. Yeah, it's hard. I mean, it is hard, you know. When you had the deal with the lottery and you had the lottery ticket scratch off, did you ever get one in scratch? I didn't. I got some. I got a few, like, from fans, actually. And like, If you would have won, would stuff. they have given you the money? Or is that like <laughs> me being a caller 10 at one of our radio stations? I feel like that's why I didn't, like, scratch them, you know? Like, if it was like, what if this was one of mm -hmm. them? What'd you do with them? Give them away? I have them. I still have them. They're just cool. unscratched. What if he's sitting oh my on gosh, oh my Come God. on. Like, oh my God. Lunchbox will mm. handle it for you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Is there, I'll bring them in. I, I'm imagining you get offered so many brand deals. Are there any that just don't make sense? But you think, hey, that's probably a great product, but it just ain't for me specifically, so you don't do it? I don't know. I had so, someone a couple years ago try to – I don't really remember who it was, but someone tried to, like, do – they wanted me to do, like, a cereal, and I was like, what is that? Chocolate How combs. That? Little combs know. in it? Oh, that's yeah. good. Yeah. I don't know. I just – it just didn't – I mean, I like cereal or whatever, but I don't know. I, I'm, I try to be, like, as picky – as I can about that because I have the ability to do that right so it's kind of like like protecting my brand in a way by like not doing things I think is more valuable than just doing everything that comes your way you know what I mean because eventually I always think of something too it's like you know when I'm a if I'm making a d decision for my career whether it's something I'm gonna say on stage or a thing that I'm gonna brand thing I'm gonna do and I'm like what are my like grandkids gonna think about this you know like if they see if they were to see this would they be like yeah that was cool i mean if grandpa like, had a cereal that'd be pretty cool, <laughs> pretty cool. if you're a kid and right? have oats in it yeah. you're a kid. but you're you're right because i'm sure with you and with me i i used to beg and say yes to everything because i just needed to say yes to things mm -hmm. to get to the next point mm -hmm. but now the freedom for you and even for me is i don't have to say yes to everything i just say yes now to the things i want to right but that wasn't always the case. Yeah, no doubt. And I put yeah. on, I put out a cereal. They said Luke didn't want to do. <laughs> yeah, it was called Berry Buttholes. <laughs> oh, so you didn't do that? Uh, so I didn't that was do me. the cereal. I did them. Okay. Yeah, Bobby's Berry I like Buttholes. It. Yeah. I like it. Um, what do you listen to at the house if you're just listening to music for your own enjoyment? Um, honestly, I spend a lot of time in my garage, and the only like music I have out there is a cassette player. So it's only old stuff that we used to buy at the gas station. Pretty, pretty much, much. From, the, from the rat, the cassette rack. <laughs> like I have one that's like Marlboro country music or something. <laughs> like it's just like a weird, like I just, a bu like I just put tapes in, honestly. Like, yeah. I mean, I listen to a ton of new stuff in, in the car, but you know, it's like mostly I'm in the, when I'm listening to music, I'm in the shop, you know. And also when I listen to music, if I'm enjoying stuff, I like to hear music that I'm comfortable and have to think a whole lot about. Right. So it's always the stuff from when I was younger, right? It's like 90s mm -hmm. country or John Mayer or Counting Crows or right. like that's, I don't have to. Or if I'm watching a TV show and I'm just like not just trying to veg out, I don't watch something that's got me like, oh, it's right on the edge of the office seat. or right. something I've something seen ten thousand like, times. Yeah, something on, like you watching anything good? Man, we watch a lot of a lot of lot of crime shows, man. A lot of a lot of murder mystery type stuff. That's kind of our jam. Is you it know? your jam because your wife wants it to be your jam? No, I love it. I wanted to be a I wanted to be a detective before I did this, so I was already in. Me and my dad watched a lot of it growing up, but my wife loves it too. What kind of detective? 
Homicide detective is what I wanted to do. Oh, wow. Yeah. What would even expose you to the idea you could do that? Was it TV then? Probably. It was probably television. Yeah. I would imagine. Are you watching Last of Us on HBO at all? I haven't. I keep hearing Dude. about it though. I've heard it's great. It's awesome. Yeah. It's not a video game. It, yes. Yeah. It's the yeah. Uh, the odd. Well, I like video games. Do you, you still I love, play? Oh yeah. Still, I oh, talked yeah. to. Do you play in your? Because Kane Brown and I hang out a little bit, and he's always like, "Man, you should get a computer to play on." You and should. It, you should. Yeah. And he's such you an should. advocate of playing on. PC, it's awesome. He's like, you're so fast, you got more. You can. Is that what you play on? Mm-hmm. With the mat, with the. No, buttons? I play with a controller. Oh, you do. Okay. On PC. So but why? Why? Why is it so much better? Well, I mean, it's like okay. So if you've got a console, right? Like it has a it has a preset, like graphics, Speed, like a graphics, graphics, graphics yeah. you know. But the computer, it's like you can change the parts out, right? Like so, you can get the newest, nicest graphics card. But I still have dial up. So would that hurt me if I play video would, games? Yeah, that would be. That'd <laughs> be a, that's bang, a deal bang, breaker bang. for sure. <laughs> deal breaker, no doubt. All right, uncomfortable questions from our listeners to okay. Luke Combs. I like it. Number one, how much does Luke Combs have in his wallet right now? Ooh, okay. I have my wallet right now. Most people though that are rich <laughs> don't carry a lot of cash. It's fat. It's okay, a lot of bills see. in that one. What or a lot of credit is cards. That wallet. This is elephant. I he killed on his way here. Oh then, then sliced off a button. How much money do I have in my yeah, wa- wallet? Is it one dollar? One dollar. Wow. I have one dollar. Wow. Times are tough. Okay. One dollar, and I'm not sure what this is. It looks like a hotel key. It's a Bed oh. Bath and Beyond coupon from the mail. <laughs> hey, yeah. Before they went out, he's like, "I'm saving this one. <laughs> we got to get that tour going." Yeah, one dollar. So. That's why we That's need you people in Zurich. Buy the five tickets, buy the tickets man. Then I can have $91. Then he has all not, yeah, and every yeah. show is sold out all yep. across the world. Yep. Um, okay, that's number one. Number two, will Luke Combs open a bar in Nashville? I don't know. I'd like to. No, yeah, no plans cool. yet? No plans, okay. no. Does Luke Combs hate or like the comparisons to Garth Brooks? I think indifferent, you know. I think people can't help but compare people. I think it's human nature, you know. I mean, it's cool, right? I mean, I would rather be compared to Garth Brooks than someone who had one hit song or somebody had never got a record deal. So, mm-hmm. I mean, I, if I had to choose a comparison, I would say I would I like that one. Nobody good. ever compares me to Garth Brooks, so <laughs> that sounds pretty cool to me. Uh, finally, and I don't understand this question, okay. so maybe there's some background to it that you mm-hmm. get, or they're just an idiot. Will Luke Combs ever reveal his songwriting pseudonym? Did you ever write under a different name? Um, I think I have, uh, I have a cut on a Wheeler Walker Jr. Album. Okay. Which uh, everybody wrote under a pseudonym for those. Under a pseudonym. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm not even going to ask you to say what, what's You get a joke. I mean, it's, you could, you know, you could probably figure it out pretty easy. I would imagine, mm-hmm. you know, cause a lot, there are a lot of people who wrote under their real names under there. Mm-hmm. And, and but your grandkids to. though, you didn't want them to see that you wrote right. a song called real sloppy boobies. <laughs> right. For right. sure. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. And correct. that's not that song, but yeah. I know Ben, well, yeah. we know Wheeler really well, yeah. so. Um, did you write with Wheeler, with Ben? Yes, Wheeler? I did. Yep. Isn't he like the nicest? Yeah, he really is. Most like yeah. quiet, reserved. He's like, yeah, absolutely. It's totally different than the. And then he the goes thing. into character, and it's like, it's, I don't even crazy. know you, bro. Yeah, it's, it's awesome. wild. It's yeah. Awesome. Okay, Luke, the new record's out. I will say this about you, and I would like for you to lend to this compliment if you don't mind. But I believe it's eighteen tracks, mm-hmm. and you wrote or co-wrote on fifteen of them. Mm-hmm. You are such. In town, just a prominent songwriter, aside from being the biggest artist. But that means there are a couple songs that you put on the record that you didn't write, which mm-hmm. shows your respect for songwriters in general. Sure. How did you decide to put on? Because I know you did the Tracy Chapman song, Fast mm-hmm. Car. Yep. So that leaves two. Right. How did you decide to put on a song that you didn't write? Um, I just felt like you know I I, I was. It's not like that I was ever against it. I think, and maybe I was. Maybe that you can pull an old interview clip where I was like, "I'll never quote a song that I didn't." Play the write. clip where he says he hates other songwriters, right? <laughs> <laughs> and maybe that maybe that clip does exist somewhere of me being like, "Well, I'll never put out a song that um, that I didn't write." Maybe that is out there, but um, all I can say is that you know I have a lot of really talented friends, and two guys that I write with really frequently are writers on on both of these two songs. Um, and so uh, one of them was written by Eric Church, Jonathan Singleton, and Travis Meadows. Um, obviously, everybody knows I'm a big Church fan. Jonathan produced this record with me and the last record with me, um, and I'm a huge, huge Travis Meadows fan. Um, so when I heard that song, um, actually just like somebody got like, got a hold of my email. Like, uh, Jonathan didn't even send it to me, or Eric didn't send it to me. Like It was some third party that was like, hey, you should check this thing out. Um, and I listened to it and just immediately was like, man, this is really great. So we should do it. And Jonathan was producing the record. So I asked him, I was like, man, we should do this. 
And he was like, yeah, dude, I'd love to, I'd love for you to do, to do it. You know what I mean? Obviously, he was stoked about it. I think it's such a compliment to your ego in the way of you wouldn't be able to do what you do if you didn't have a healthy one because even myself, I'm like, I'm gonna please buy tickets. I'm gonna, you, I think you should buy tickets to watch me do this or I think you should spend your time in the morning listening to my show. I have to have an ego to be successful. Sure. Because we this is a nutty business. It is, no doubt. But there's some awareness and an ego check with you going – there's a couple songs that are really good that deserve to be on this, and I don't have to write every song on the record. Yeah, without a doubt. You know, I think— um, Is that getting old? I think so. I Boom, mean, I think, we did it. I we mean, turned it around. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> I, mean, I think there's definitely some maturity to that, you know, um, to be able to understand that, you know, there's people that are, will always write better songs than you. You know, that's inevitable. You know, um, there are days when you may write better songs than them, but they might write 400 songs a year, and you might, I might write 20 or 30. You know, so obviously there's going to be songs out there that, you know, are inevitably better than something that I could have wrote. And if, if I were to have tried to write that song, you know, I wouldn't be as good, in my opinion, as the one, the one that's on the record. Last so. question, by the way, new album out today, Getting Old. It's the second. It's just a new album because it's confusing yeah. when I say it's the new album, yeah. Getting Old. It's mm -hmm. like the, it's like the sequel. Yeah. So final question: If I said, okay, look. Look, they came to me yesterday and said, hey, I'm going to die in an hour if you don't write me a hit. Can you write a hit in an hour? Straight up, guaranteed hit in one hour or gun to my head, they, they're going to kill me. Oh. Man, it's a coin toss, I would say. I could write a, I could write a, a song that I feel like was a hit. I felt like was a hit in an hour. Whether that means it's a hit or not is yet to be seen. Okay, well, they just told me 30 minutes. Okay, 30 minutes, no chance. Okay. I'm you're dead. smoked. I'm dead. Yeah, I'm 30 okay. minutes, wow. you're smoked. I need you to solve the murder because I'm not sure who it was. They were in a mask, but yeah. I'm leaving it to you. I wouldn't even start writing it if okay. we go ahead 30 minutes. No, you're going to have to try. try. I'd be like, Bull sorry, crap. dude. Sorry, it's not going to happen. Yeah. All right, uh, new records out today. Luke, always good to see you, buddy. Likewise. Thank you. It's, it's